One of the things that I get asked a lot is if I can help somebody make a profile picture for them for something like Twitter or Facebook or one of the other social networking sites. Usually people have a picture, they want to upload the picture, but the sites require a couple of things in order to upload a profile picture. Usually they require that the picture be a certain dimension, meaning a certain width and a height, and often they require it to be something like a certain file size, and so fit within 700K or 100K, depending on the size. So we're going to take a look at how to make a profile picture from iPhoto. First thing I'm going to do in iPhoto is I'm going to take a look at this one picture, and I want to make this picture my profile picture. So I'm going to double click on this picture. Now I'm going to want to make this a square, and the reason I'm going to want to make this a square is that most of the social media sites require that your profile picture be a square. I don't know why they do that, but they do that, so let's take a look at that. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to click on the Edit button. And when I click the Edit button, it's going to bring up iPhoto's editing tools. When it brings up iPhoto's editing tools, one of the first tools is the Crop tool. I'm going to hit the Crop tool button, and now I've got the outlines of my crop. So it indicates for me the four corners of the outline of my photo. Now you'll notice that this isn't square. The way I can make this square is by coming down here to the Constrain button, and we see we have certain sizes that we can constrain to, and I'm going to choose from this list square. Now, it doesn't really matter what area you crop, it will be square. I'm going to move my cursor to the bottom, and as I drag my cursor, you'll notice that it maintains a square aspect ratio. It's also showing me lines that are called the rule of thirds, and the rule of thirds is used in photography to help make a better image. The eye is drawn to certain portions of, the, of an image. This rule of thirds lines let you uh, line up your crop in order to try and take advantage of that. Uh, I suggest you take a look at the uh, Google rule of thirds, and you'll see some really good explanations of what rule of thirds are. So now at this point I'm going to grab my crop and I'm going to drag it down here and I'm going to put me right on this intersection of this rule of thirds line. And actually I'm going to drag it a little smaller here so I don't have that guy's elbow sticking in the side of the picture. And I'm going to hit the enter key. When I hit the enter key it now crops my image down and now I've got a perfectly square image that I can use for my profile. So now I've edited this picture and I'm going to tell iPhoto that I'm done editing by clicking the done button down here. And now that I'm finished I go back to my album and my album's got this picture and I'm going to click on this one picture and I'm going to want to export this. Now let's uh, take for example a website that might tell you that you have a certain number of pixels across and down that you have to export your picture to. So let's say it tells you that your thumbnail has to be no more than 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So now that I have my picture selected, and you can tell I do because it's got the yellow border around it, I'm going to choose File, I'm going to choose Export, and when I choose Export, we'll see what the normal file export settings are. Now the kind is probably JPEG, most of the file sites are okay with JPEGs or PNG files, we'll choose JPEG in this case. The JPEG quality has to do with its compression, in other words, how small it makes the file. And the way JPEG compression works is it takes a picture and looks at it and it basically throws away things that are things that the human eye wouldn't notice if it got rid of. And so, for example, on my shirt, which is brown, if I got rid of a little bit of the brown here and the, some of the, the gradations and the, the color or the detail in here, my eye probably wouldn't care a lot about that. So if I'm at a medium setting, it might look like one shade of brown instead of two shades of brown right here. If I go to the small setting, the smallest size, it's probably going to compress it so there's less detail here in the shirt. Things like that are okay for a profile picture, though. I really don't mind that. So in this case, I'm going to tell it that I want it to do the smallest size. I'm going to come down here to size. Now the size is a little bit misleading. It says JPEG quality here is the low, the smallest size. That means the smallest file size, not the dimensions of the picture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the size, and this is choosing the actual size, the length, and the width of your picture. You only really need to do this if you're exporting an image to one of the sites that require you fit your image within a certain width and a height. So in this case, let's pretend that we knew a certain width and a height we had to export it to, so I'm going to choose Custom. And let's say that our site told us that we had to fit it within 300 pixels. So we have a max dimension of 300 pixels. Now, we can also say the max height or the max width, but since this is a square, those two numbers will be the same thing. So a maximum dimension of 300 pixels. The widest file size, 300 pixels. I'm going to say Export. And when I hit the Export button, it's going to ask me where to put it. And I've got a folder on my desktop called Profile Pictures. Now when I hit export, I have a folder on my desktop, and that folder is called Profile Pictures, and I'm going to rename this picture. I'm going to call it Smiling David, and I'm going to hit OK. And when I do that, it's going to make the picture for me, and then the export box goes away. So now I want to take a look at that folder on my desktop and see what size the image is. And so I'm going to click the Minimize button here. I'm going to go into the Profile Pictures, 
and I'm going to click on Smiling David, and it will show me that it is a 12K file, and that my dimensions are 300 by 300. So now this is a perfect size for just about any of those photo sharing websites or social media sites like Flickr or Twitter that can all use these small thumbnails and it's 12K. It's perfectly within the size limitation. I'm going to go back to iPhoto just for a second here and just show one more thing. So let me bring iPhoto back up. When I bring iPhoto back up, what I want to do is I'm just going to go back to the file export menu. Some of the websites, and specifically Twitter is one of those websites, doesn't care what the dimensions of the picture are, just as long as it fits within a certain file size. And that file size right now happens to be 700K. And so I'm going to actually just choose medium for the size. That's going to pick the length and the width. And I want to just choose medium for the JPEG quality here and hit export again. In this case, I'm going to give it a different name. I'm going to call it Smiling David 2. It's going to export that picture. I'm going to go back to the desktop and take a look at Smiling David 2. And I'll see that that's now a 48K picture, and it's 640 pixels by 640 pixels. So again, this picture would also be usable on Twitter. Why would I want a bigger picture on Twitter? Well, when you use a profile picture on Twitter, anyone who's logged into Twitter can click on your small thumbnail and see the larger picture of you. And so if you want them to be able to see a larger, much more detailed picture of you, you could simply export your picture at a higher resolution. And as long as it fits within 700K, that's going to be fine for something like Twitter. So again, what we did is we went into iPhoto, we just cropped an image really quickly, we exported the image, it's perfectly acceptable for something like Twitter or Facebook or one of those sites. Now all we have to do is upload our images and we've got our new profile picture.